Holy cow. So freaking pod. Chapter, Chapter 14. 14. Hello, guys. It's Charles. And me, Charidum. And Chad. This this chat is going to read the summary. Uh, the chapter opens with Anna's kinky wet dream involving Christian and a writing prop. No more disembodied coveralls for us. Anna's stepdad Ray drives her to a graduation ceremony. Kate delivers a valedictorian speech, and Christian does his guest speaker thing. Uh, during Christian's speech, it's reiterated that he wants to feed the hungry, but this time we learn it was because he was once a starving babby. They all hang out after the ceremony. Uh, Christian says he will try the hearts and flowers thing. Kate stretches the truth and introduces Christian as Anastasia's boyfriend to Ray, and Anastasia agrees to sign the contract. Uh, some other shit happens. Anastasia goes home and trades emails with Christian. Uh, she decides she wants to see him that evening to discuss the contract more, so he makes prompt plans to come over to her and Kate's apartment. Anastasia scrawls a Thomas Hardy quote on a paper so she can give the books back to Christian in a sassy way. I didn't realize that the X was supposed to stand for Chris for many, many years. I should just call it Xmas. Is it supposed to be Christ? So I really should just put X in, not X T in. <laughs> well, no, I think it's supposed to be like a Chris cross. It's from Greek, um, which stands for like it's from Chi or Chai, and it's from like I forget, I forget how to pronounce this Greek word, but it's basically Christ in Greek. So people just started doing that as a shorthand. By the way, yeah. for our listeners, this happened because in the notes I get lazy and I write Christian as Xtian. That was not clear, I don't think. My first theory is, and it's actually not my theory, I think it's Cherry Doom's theory from a couple of episodes ago, is that Anna is a horcrux and um, we have extra evidence for this. So if you'll remember, I think it may have been episode 12 or episode 13, we said that the reason that Anastasia has a goddess, or maybe it was even episode 11, is that um, Christian has like an inner god and it and it splintered, the godliness splintered off in her the first time that they kissed. Incidentally, the goddess started showing up for Anna. Based on that, that's already like really good cause to believe that she's a horcrux because it's it's done by splitting the soul, right? <laughs> Voldemort split his soul into seven different parts. Christian's only done it once, probably because he's not as powerful of a dark wizard. Well, you're just assuming he's only done it once. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm assuming. He has had 15 other partners. So are we saying that he has 16 horcruxes? That's fucking insane. He could have even more. Dumbledore's already taken care of, like, five. Dumbledore's just been going around killing subs. It'll come up in the goddess section later. I think that's the most dramatic evidence, so, uh, hold on, Nelly. <laughs> Next one, uh, Christian is a robot who can charge and fix laptops because of this quote. I feel the charge of his flesh on mine. Do you have a problem with your laptop? He's, of course, asking this because he wanted her to email him back and thought it was because her laptop wasn't charged. I like th how many of, of our pet theories are that somebody is a robot. <laughs> I mean, we've accused Anna, Christian, and Taylor of being robots. Well, that's because there's the evidence is there. Maybe if they started acting more like people. All right, so it looks like Chad is next this time. Woo! So I have two pet theories, and they're um, sort of derived from the same idea that Anna didn't exist before the events of the book. At the start of the book, when she woke up that morning, that was the first time she'd ever woken up, or at least had, like, any sort of sentience, like, that she'd been cognizant of herself and everything around her. So there could be a variety of reasons for this. Uh, my first one, just to, as an example, is the tried-and-true, like, god creation theory that uh, either from any one of the characters, herself, which would be weird, or Christian or Kate, she's creating the world around her it's like incredibly this is like the the classic solipsist one but so her like apparently never having felt any sexual desire or like lust or having any thoughts about this before christian which is something that is sort of implied several times throughout the book and then implied a little more heavily at the very beginning of this chapter because of her dream i have something to say to you about this which is that there's a meta textual reason for this being true which is that the book didn't exist and therefore the characters did not exist until the book was written. But they but they did exist in Twilight. Mm, oh, good point. But it's but it's an alternate universe. So the universe the pocket universe did not exist at that time. What what like coin flip or whatever quantum theory, you know, decision made this universe spin off from Twilight? The lack of existence of vampires. Uh. Perhaps. Sci scientists are working day and night to find out no then because then christian would have been would have been born in the 1900s but maybe he wouldn't have edward was born in like the 1900s or something so he would have died <laughs> maybe edward's parents would not have had sex um 
if there wasn't vampires until a hundred years later. So you're asking, like, um, what would have caused this to spin off from the Twilight universe? I mean, it could be the other way around. That's true. I think that probably things in this are too different to ask, like, that, uh, like, trace it to a sim- single event, since in the Twilight universe, like we were saying, Edward is a 19th century vampire, and, like, there's a family of vampires... And like so for her Christ- so for Christian to exist as a twenty seven a mortal twenty seven year old in Seattle, uh, a lot of stuff would have to be different. I think probably yeah maybe oh well oh well. <laughs> so that's one idea, and then another one is just that Anna is like some experiment by Grand Enterprises and uh, Washington State University Vancouver, specifically the environmental science department that Christian funds. They made her, and Christian's just been keeping tabs on her is she like a food source i mean that's his goal to feed the world are they gonna eat her maybe maybe she's a worker drone yeah i think it's something like that like she's it may even just be like a thing on the side he's like can you make me a woman and they're like well we can do that so he just throws money at them and so kate's there to look after like this fits in with the kate theory too like kate's there to look after anna i was gonna say maybe kate is the scientist who created anna for christian who's funding the like, he doesn't know about actually making these creatures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And she just happens to be getting... She went back to school for her English degree after <laughs> being a... You know, having her doctorate in genetic engineering. That explains why she's valedictorian. Man, I... <laughs> this really makes me want to read this book, but I know it doesn't exist. Oh. But then that's also the reason that, like, Anna doesn't seem to have any possessions. Everything that she has has, like, been loaned yeah. or given to her. It's because everyone just donated stuff for the project. That's also why Ray is not related to her, because Anastasia doesn't have parents. It's all coming together. I'm awarding this pet theory, pet theory of the cast, the winner of the cast. <laughs> Mine is that uh, Christian is not attracted to Anna specifically. He is attracted to her family. For instance, I mean, the only instance is that, uh, uh, we bring this up later, but Christian is described as charming the pants off Ray. And I think that maybe he is He's trying to sleep with both of them. It's not biological since they aren't actually related. He must be attracted to some, like, the nurture aspect somehow, like the sociological way that Anna was raised and her family by extension. Maybe he fetishizes, like, the middle class because he got, he had gone from being very low class to very, very high class in a short time. So, like, what's in between? But isn't Anna, isn't Anna more low, lower class? I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's... I don't know if it's lower class or just being a Luddite. <laughs> I think it's like Ray, that just like Ray is like kind of a crotchety backwoods dad. Yeah, he's like a, a cabin in the woods dad, and her mother is... He's a Vietnam vet, so he probably... Like, he's sort of characterized as one of those Vietnam vets that came back and didn't like couldn't find much because of the, the circumstances. Well, I, th- I do think it is sort of a typical middle class thing for like Anna, like Anna should have her own car or something. Um, other than the one, like, Jose gave to her. So, well, but then maybe it's wrong for me to judge from the middle class of today, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, what, like, what, uh, what, what budget range are we picturing middle class? Because I'm, like, middle class... Let's say he makes, maybe not middle class, I want to say lower middle class. Let's say he makes, like, 60000 a year doing, like, I don't know, paintings of ducks or something. Like the guy from Fargo? Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of him. <laughs> but, um... She also has multiple parents, like... Yeah, so that skews things a bit. Yeah. Maybe there's some confusion over which parent has to actually support her. Well, definitely her biological mother. But I think that Ray... She's way closer to Ray. Well, he still re- she still refers to him as stepdad, so it's not like he adopted her. No, no, but she calls him dad, which I actually bring up, I think, in the podcast. If we're following Twilight canon as what to look to, it's... So at some point, her mother is so neglectful of her that she goes to live with Ray. That's not really true. That's stretching it a bit but in her teens. So let's say like when she's uh, 16, she goes to live with Ray and now she's 21 and she probably already liked him in the first place because they were married and he was her dad. I can't, yeah, I can't figure out like who Anna spent more time with. Like her mom's had all these husbands. It seems like she might go to Ray just for the stability. Yeah. But I don't know. She sounds like she's I'll do some research after this episode. I think it sounds like maybe she stopped living with her mother recently. I don't know. I don't know either. Those were some good theories. Let's have some mechanics now. Here's a quote. Ray has gone to sit with the other parents and well-wishers in the rake seating while I make my way to my seat. I'm wearing my black gown and cap, and I feel protected by them. Anonymous. There's no one on the stage yet, but I can't seem to steady my nerves. My heart is pounding, and my breathing is shallow. He's here. Somewhere. I wonder if Kate is talking to him. Interrogating him, maybe. 
I'm not sure if it's clear because the way that I read it doesn't really imply the structures of the sentences, but like, oh my god. She goes like, words, comma, more words, words, comma, more words. And she does this for like a really long time and like you wouldn't think that it would be annoying, but it really is. <laughs> you need to switch up your sentences. Like you can't do action, 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 action. I think we may have mentioned it a couple episodes ago that we we didn't think it was necessary to have, I do this, and then I do this in a sentence, and yet here we are. She's done that a million times. This is uh, something I have a problem with a lot in my own writing. Like, I will try to do multiple things in a sentence for some reason. Like, I feel like it's not enough sentence or something. And it's it's not, you want to have varied sentence structures just so it doesn't get, I think it's just something you get into a habit of, and it's hard to break. I asked about this in a writing seminar once, and they basically said, you you need to fix all that in editing. Yeah, that's true. Also, something that might be an Americant in, in the print version, she calls the bleachers, I'm assuming is what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, she calls it tiered seating rather than raked seating. I've never heard a raked se as a description for, you know, mm -hmm. stadium seating or whatever. I wonder if it was one of those things where she couldn't remember the word for bleachers and so she was like, oh, like, what do you say it is? They probably don't have, I bet it's some other word over there. It's Chad's turn <laughs> anyway. to say some words. So in this sentence, my inner goddess jumps up and down with cheerleading pom pom shouting yes at me. My only gripe is that yes, you mean quotes. Okay, it's my turn. Jose, the photographer. Christian's eyes narrow, his face frosting. Oh, crap. It was a contender for my favorite line. It makes it sound like his cake, his his face is a cake, was cake frosting. Like, I understand it's supposed to be that it's like frosting over or icy, but like his face frosting. There is also an unacceptable comma crime here. A lack of a comma. So really a comma mystery. Oh, crap. So it's capital O, O, capital C, crap. And there's no comma. So it's not, oh, crap. It's, oh, crap. I don't know. I hate it. Yeah, I think that's probably true, but I don't know. I think something like, oh crap, is sort of a... Uh... It could be okay. I agree. But just as far as pedantic grammar goes, it's not okay. <clears throat> so this sentence... In fact, I think most of the female members of the audience inch closer and a few of the men. Just very quickly throwing in the context when Christian is talking. Yeah, this is another comma thingy. If she had broken it up with, basically before the end, there should be a comma or some other sort of punctuation break. Most of the female members inch, inch closer and a few of the men, or like a dash, um, they inch closer and a few of the men. But as it is now, it's just a sort of like a run-on sentence. Not, It's not a run-on sentence, it's a full sentence, but... It doesn't really feel like a full sentence. It's an incomplete sentence tacked onto a complete one. And a few of the men. Hmm? <laughs> if it was my choice, I would go with the dash dash and a few of the men. I like that one best. The comma feels... I mean, it's right, but it's weird. I don't like it. Who's gay? <laughs> now we know. <laughs> Christian's outing the gays. Okay, here we go. I gasp, and I'm Eve in the Garden of Eden, and he's the serpent, and I cannot resist. Uh, okay, so it's probably not clear, but I gasp, comma, and I'm Eve in the Garden of Eden, comma, and he's the serpent, comma, and I cannot resist. Like, and, and, and I... And I, and I, and I, and I. Like, you need to- I gasp, period. I'm Eve in the Garden of Eden. He's the serpent, and I cannot resist. See, is that that is- that is just sloppy. This is horrible. And it kind of sounds like the whole, like, I'm all bird snake, moth flame. <laughs> it's the same bullshit. Also, it sort of sounds like- it makes me think like she's actually she's gasping and then that transports her to the Garden of Eden. If only that was true. I know it's I know it's you know being a, a metaphor, a little ham-handedly. It's no wonder that humanity fell from grace if if Anna was Eve. She's so easily tricked. <laughs> who's who's Adam? Um, Jose and Christian is the snake. He's Satan. I was thinking of Ocelot because when you started that other line about like I'm. I'm, I'm all bird snake, that one. For some reason, I heard you say, I'm a bird snake, but in Otacon's voice. Snake, I'm a bird. <laughs> Maybe that's what it meant by the whole bird snake attraction. Because Otacon has a birdie. Well, for a little bit. I think it drowned. It's unclear. Stop talking about video games. We probably have some listeners who don't play them. Americans, here we go. At 11 precisely, the Chancellor appears from behind the stage. At 11 precisely. I mean, it, you can say it, but come on. Is Chancellor the right word? Who is that? Is that the Dean? No, that's separate from the Dean. I had to look this up just to make sure, because rarely do in, like, the US do we refer to the Chancellor as, like, 
the head of the college, even though that's the truth. Oh, is it the president? No, that's different. It's different from the president. It's a different office than the president. Jesus, how many fucking people are at the own a college? The dean definitely doesn't own the college. The president just runs is head of administrative, and the chancellor is like the figurehead of the school, mostly for their academics or their achievements. Let me think. The uh, I'm not actually going to say who the chancellors of my school were, because then you could look it up. But uh, yeah, like, it's it's sep- it's distinct. Like it's usually. Um, a figurehead position and can vary the, the length of whoever is like whoever holds that office and then president like i said administrative and then dean is like student affairs because he's the one who's always dealing with the unruly frat houses okay that makes sense okay so ray is so british like he likes he drinks tea with anna and later like at the very end they have tea twice in this in this visit he comes in for tea when they have like half an hour before they need to go which is not enough time in my opinion at the end of the visit Anna's like worried or something overcome with she's overcome and he's like come in I'll, I'll make you some tea and she says tea is always the answer according to Ray and you brought up the point that oh yeah so I was a little bit suspicious that Ray liked tea because I've never known a white American dad who likes tea. Like, like my dad would have it, like, sometimes because we have a special teapot called a Brown Betty. And, like, if we had people over for dinner and it was, like, you know, it was a great time or whatever, it's, like, in its winter, it's, like, bring out the Brown Betty, let's have tea. But it would never, he would never do that thing, like, oh, I'm a dad, like, here we go, have tea this morning. I think dads are very much into the coffee here in America. Sometimes my dad would have hot chocolate, but never tea. Yeah, tea is... For ladies. Ladies. Or in America, anyways. (laughs) Yeah. But, I mean, maybe it's because he's from the Northwest, who knows? Yeah, maybe. Even though I'm pretty sure they're all about coffee. Any Northwest listeners who want to chime in? I have two two theories. Maybe, one, he developed a a taste for tea while he was in Vietnam for some reason because it was like a common drink or two maybe he just like started drinking tea as a way to get closer to Anna and he just realized he liked tea because Anna loves tea I have to push you on this because I I don't know if the Vietnamese are known for liking tea especially they love Vietnamese coffee yeah they like coffee yeah they do yeah and soy soda love that soy soda but uh, but I mean that's just my point like while he was in Vietnam maybe he couldn't afford coffee okay whatever have your thing Chad just have your thing (laughs) maybe he was stationed somewhere else like no no you're held to a very high academic standard here at the whole so are you saying that there's no tea in Vietnam no I'm not saying there's no tea I'm just saying it's not common it's not like hey like let's have a cup of tea like it kind of is in China for instance that's very popular tea is or I guess maybe Japan it's also a little bit popular but not I mean compared to those two countries Vietnam is like definitely more about the coffee. Is how I feel. It might have something to do with the French influence. Yes, yeah. I agree. Vietnam. Here we go. Another American. Christian stands out in his bespoke gray suit. You may be asking, if you're an American listener, what does bespoke mean? And well, I looked it up on Wikipedia, so here you go. Bespoke is a British English word that means a clothing item made to a buyer's specification, personalized or tailored. Dot, dot, dot. The distinguishing points of bespoke tailoring are the buyer's total control over the fabric used, the features and fit, and the way the garment should be made. So even Wikipedia specifically says it's a British English word. Like, it's, it is. It's not American. I've never heard that. You've never heard bespoke? Mm-mm. I thought it was the, I thought that this was unusual because how would she know it was bespoke? She doesn't really know anything about clothes, so... Maybe it, it fits his rippled, sculptured body so well that it could only be bespoke. Um, okay, we have one more, I believe. Here we go. And a baby, Christian murmurs. And I nearly de- expire at the endearment. Look, I almost said die at the endearment. <laughs> I nearly expire at the endearment. I say I do expire, but I don't know if that maybe is British and not really Southern. When I read that, I think of like a Southern belle fainting, needing a mint julep. This has happened before. We've we've brought up her use of, of expiration before yeah. as being sounding southern. She, uh... Yeah, it's weird. Maybe they just bought her too many months ago. <laughs> Looks like we're on to wording now. Here we go. It's me. <sighs> who does, Anna? In other words, who, who approves of your shitty old car, Anna? That's old news. Why are you being so coy? Give it up, girlfriend! <laughs> Kate says this. She gets a lot more like sassy, trendy, cool in this chapter. Well, I'll bring up another line later. It's just... Ugh. I had this too, and I was like, what are... You? No. It's you... so bad. Or maybe she's saying literally her girlfriend. Yeah. Anna. Give it up, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think that would be a cute thing to do in a relationship. To say, oh no, you didn't, boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chad has to talk. 
Chad has to talk. I have known what it's like to be profoundly hungry. Uh, Christian delivers this line during his speech about the hunger, the hunger of the world. I just thought profoundly interest, profoundly hungry is was an interesting way of putting it. And I don't know if it's like it, it is definitely correct. It's kind of like Anna's profound sadness, though. I mean, profound is something like a really good math proof or like a philosophical heavy issue like <laughs> profoundly hungry i mean that's not really like that's kind of too much of a worldly matter isn't it i don't think that's the issue i i have but it just i get i mean i guess it's a way of being if this is a real speech for example it will be a way of being tactful because it definitely makes sense like he had a he was so hungry that he had a, like he understood in a profound way like what it means to to starve or something but i suppose i guess it's a way to avoid saying like starve or like desperately hungry or something like that which maybe it would be inappropriate for something like this but so maybe you're saying it's like a euphemism for saying i was really fucked yeah up. yeah situation that's why i think it's interesting like it's it's totally a correct way to say this but considering what he's talking about he's he's talking about like people in um you know, undeveloped areas that are don't have access to food and are literally starving. So him saying like I've I've known what it's like to be profoundly hungry, it's a it is very euphemistic to me. But I suppose for like a college graduation speech, it's what you would have to do. Then again, he has all the money in the world, so he can do whatever he wants. Say what he wants, do what he wants. So that was just that, that was just my thoughts. Like it definitely makes sense, and it's def to it's totally a way to say that. I just thought it was very, it just stuck out to me considering the context of the rest of the speech. We didn't, and we have it, we don't really bring this up anywhere else in our notes, but this is where Anna f discovers the general reason why Christian has such a big food issue. I think we probably have said it so many times in the past that it's not shocking, <laughs> but it's shocking for Anastasia, and as it should be. In fact, it's so shocking that she doesn't listen to the rest of his speech. Okay, so after she wakes up from her, her wet dream, she says, I didn't know I could dream sex. Was it something I ate? Besides, like, the silliness of that statement. It makes me think she's saying, I didn't know I could dream sex. Like, <laughs> dream sex as a, as a verb itself. I agree. I would say maybe a dream of sex. I, could, I didn't know I could have a dream. I could have a sex dream. Yeah. yeah it's, mm. Um, incidentally, it's not weird that she's confused about it. I just want to throw that out there, because it's not common knowledge. I, I, I'm fairly sure that when you're in health education in high school or whatever, they don't say, oh, if you're a woman, expect to have wet dreams because there's no biological reason for that to happen. So she can be shocked. I allow it. Wait, is there a biological reason for men to have wet dreams? You know, it may be teenagers. I, I'm just saying that perhaps they didn't explore their sexualities up until this point when they take health class. If, you, if, if one does not release, you know, often enough, then what happens is that it starts, like, you know, doing its own thing at night. And that's why... I what I have heard is that the erection happens first, then... That is totally subjective. There's there's no there's no basis for that. Like, that's just a thing people tell you. Of course there's a basis for that. I mean, what, what no, are you trying I to mean, say? No, I mean, like, how, people... would you, how would you know? Like, how could you tell... Like, how would you be able to... Just because it can't be measured doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. <laughs> Okay, like I've heard that quote unquote morning wood isn't necessarily due to a sexual dream. Right, it's just a hold in your pee. Yes. What? It's yeah. not, it, like it's not, like that is not, it's just, this is, there's increased blood flow to like the genitals in sleep for both genders, but that doesn't necessarily result in sexual dreams. Right. So the reason that people get morning wood <laughs> is that when you have a boner, it's really hard to pee. Yes, that is, that is part of it. But you can also get erections during the night just because. Yes, I am aware of that. Like there's increased blood flow during sleep. Yeah. Well, anyways. Wait, hang on, hold on! Okay, I'm holding on. <laughs> well, it's like vomit. It's like vomiting response to like getting rid of poison. It's just a physiological thing. Because the way that the like male anatomy works with the tubes, there's separate ones for urine and semen. So it changes which tube is open. It's like swallowing. For the record, let it show that um, Chad equates boners with barfing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know that it's it's both a response controlled by uh, your nervous system. I always love learning more about boners. <laughs> boners are great. So speaking of boners, and by boner I mean mistake, there are two very strange questions that are asked in this chapter, and here they are. And ask Kate, do you want tea? Would you like me to hear your speech for today? Is that like, you're going to have to help me here because I don't remember what this is, but is this not like a thing of passive voice versus active voice? Why would you ask somebody, would you like me to hear your speech for today? Um, 
Do you want to practice your speech for today? Sounds a little better. I think that might be an American. Really? Maybe. Hmm. Okay, well, somebody somebody weigh in on that. Twitter, email, I don't care. And then Ray also does something like this himself. He says, when Anastasia's all nervous when they walk into the fucking place, Good luck, Annie. You seem awfully nervous. Do you have to do anything? I, saw, I thought that was weird, too. It's, it's just not really how people here talk. I don't know if it is an English thing. It doesn't really sound like it's me. And by English, I mean... British English. Uh, it kind of sounds like Ray is asking her if she needs to let out a anxiety-induced number two or something. Do you have to do anything? I don't- she's just graduating. She says, I slice a bagel and pop it into the toaster. I flush, remembering my vivid dream. This is in the same paragraph, so it makes it sound like they're related. Why, is she, why does putting the bagel in the toaster remind her of her dream? Is the bagel her vagina? <laughs> and it, where is she putting her vagina? What is the toaster if she's putting her vagina in something? So this is, this is a, there's many layers to this. So the bagel itself has a hole in it, but it's right. also sort of like <laughs> a, a, a dick that has, that is eating itself, a Eurobarous dick. And then she is putting this vagina, <laughs> Eurobarous dick, into something else. The toaster is the vagina as well. The bagel is also sliced, her hymen being broken? So the sliced bagel dick vagina being placed into a very warm vagina to be burnt. Uh, I think she needs a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay, here's the quote. Introduce you to my dad as what? Because Christian says, like, why don't you introduce me to your dad? Introduce you to my dad as what? This is the man who deflowered me and wants us to start a BDSM relationship. You're not wearing running shoes. <laughs> um, deflowered? Deflowered? When's the last time somebody used that who wasn't, like, over 45 years old? It's just, like, a weird way. From what we've seen from Anna, this does not surprise me at all. It is very Britlet to say deflowered. Don't the kids pop cherries anymore? Don't they swipe V cards? <laughs> I The slang may have changed since I exited high school. I think there would probably be a more natural way to refer to that, was my point. She's a college. She's graduating from college. Her slang, So her slang would be a little outdated anyway, but, um... <clears throat> Is also all I'm saying. But, yeah, but um, I mean, we're about the same age, I think. She's yeah. 21 in 2011, and I was 21 in 2011. I would never say deflowered. <laughs> Some people would. I'm not saying I would, but... Well, they're dumb. I'm trying to figure out how old we are. She graduated in 2011. I think I graduated in 2012. I'm younger. Wait, no. She graduates pretty young 21 is that yeah that's right oh uh, maybe i'm just a terrible student uh, well some people turn 22 during their single uh, senior year not me i'm 23 and i'm a senior oh my god <laughs> it's all right edit that out <laughs> no that's the first thing that's gonna be in the podcast <laughs> that would be great but really sad and terrible as well stop hurting my feelings charity and please I'm say your thing <laughs> okay um we follow the stream of humanity dotted with ubiquitous black and red gowns heading towards the gym uh, that's just the stream of humanity. It sounds interesting. It's an interesting word choice. Makes me think of uh, Soil and Green. Just being a big stream of humanity goo. Yeah, it's kind of like depersonalizing. I mean, that's probably the point. The factory system of college. Get them in, get them out. <laughs> it's, it makes it sort of sound like the gowns are what's heading towards the gym and not the stream of humanity. Mm -hmm. Or, well, hang on. No, it's a stream of humanity. So in other words, like a big river of naked people with just black and red gowns that are just dotted in, you know, because dotted is not like, you know, dated. This is all, that's always been an interesting phrase, but also I just want to point out that it is a pretty common phrase. Sh stream of humanity is? Oh, I've never heard it. Like it's, it's not, it's not that common, but it's definitely a thing that is in a lot of books, I think. So I'm going to say my thing. I'm seized by a sense of raw outrage. Poor, fucked up, kinky, philanthropic Christian. Though I'm sure he wouldn't see himself this way, and would repel any thoughts of sympathy or pity. This is not really a sentence. So first she says, I'm seized by a sense of raw outrage, comma. Poor, fucked up, sinky, sinky, kinky, philanthropic Christian, dash, dash. Though I'm sure he wouldn't see himself this way, and would repel any thoughts of sympathy or pity. So like, what, what, like... This sentence is special because it can go in mechanics, wording, or situational, because all those things are wrong. And this is a really weird way to say what she means. And also, from a situational standpoint, like, why would you- Poor fucked up kinky philanthropic Christian! It's just like a really mean thing to say about somebody. He's not- Well, she's not being- she's not being sarcastic. No, she's not, but I mean, the fact that this is like her opinion of him is really like- Like, would he really be dating her if, like, he knew that she thought of him this way? Poor fucked up? Well, no, he would repel any thoughts of sympathy or pity. He would probably still date her. Why would he care? I don't agree. Why? <laughs> because I think that he wouldn't care. I think he would say, you're wrong. 
wrong. Yeah, that's that's what I think. Like he would just he would just bulldoze over it. He'd just be like, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> well, whatever, I don't care about your. <laughs> I mean, he was like, you think I he, earlier? He was like, you think I was traumatized? Nope. Oh right, so he's just he's not even taking it personally. You mean? Okay, yeah. I accept that. Uh, Christian calls Anna baby a lot in front of her dad who also calls her baby though he says baby girl it's just really weird to me and i don't like it like i wouldn't want my boyfriend calling me any pet name in front of my parents that's just super weird in my opinion but i hate pet names in general when i when i was in middle school my first boyfriend like we had a very long discussion where we were trying to decide what pet names we were going to use that's cute and we never came to a consensus. In my experience, they usually just kind of happen. Exactly, but it was it was funny because it was so stilted and silly. In my current relationship, I'm not sure how this happened, but Bubble, and it turned into mm. Bubby, so we just call each other Bubby all the time. <laughs> all right. Anyways, I would just like I I would never use them. Period. I would never use them. I I, I hate affection. <laughs> Me too. Next is situationals. So let's start off with a hilarious fucked up thing to say. It seems like maybe Ray, Anastasia's stepdad, was set up for some ethical incest play because he's like, it's like, oh, he's my dad, but he's not really related to me. Like, oh, he's just my stepdad, but I think of him like a real dad. <sighs> yeah, it's strange that she would, uh, and I'm going to look in the f in the fanfic right now to see if, if he is relegated to being her stepdad in that one as well but it seems strange that, that she would change him being her real dad like she, like he was at twilight to being her stepdad unless she just needed like another difference so that it didn't resemble twilight as much you know it seems to me and we'll bring it up a little bit later in this same section there's all so many classic erotica possibilities that are just never explored like with kate or with taylor or whatever <laughs> saying. Yeah, and I'm glad I, that uh, I'm not the only one who sort of saw this weird thing where he was set up as not her real dad. There's so much, like, kissing of Ray and, like, telling him he's so great. Like, I mean, like, a real dad, you're like, fuck you, dad, like, drive me to graduation, like, stop farting in the car. He is just her, he is just her favorite stepdad, though. Maybe, maybe, like, her biological father, she, all that was true. She's only known, known him maybe for a little while, but. No, her biological dad died when she was, like, three. So there's no time for that. Hmm. In in the original fiction, uh, it's her dad. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Probably just to make it different from Twilight is my guess. Yeah. Trad, say the thing! <laughs> okay, so uh, after the graduation is over, everyone's mingling. Christian is introduced to her father, her stepdad, eventually, Ray. And so she's observing this interaction and... She notes that Christian is being incredibly charming. She says, he's charming the pants off my dad like he did you. That's her subconscious. And I, I think that's a, that's a pretty good point. He's he's turned on his charm. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so, I mean, like, is it just, like, to point out his manipulative abilities? Yeah, because, so what's happening is that she said, oh, he's charming the pants off my dad. And the subconscious is like, you too are a victim of this charm. And I said that I would much rather read a Christian slash Ray story. Because it's an interesting pairing. A young billionaire sailing dude uh, with a working class old guy. <laughs> Yeah. That would be interesting. I think so, too. The romance could have the potential to be a lot more dramatic because, like, maybe Ray has, like, PTSD or something and is like, he doesn't want to let anyone in. But but the young, hot billionaire gets in. <laughs> in more ways than one. <clears throat> uh, Ray frowns when Anna says that she's wearing Kate's dress. Why? He's probably like, why, are, why is your friend constantly giving you things? Why don't you buy anything? Does he see the strange... Um relationship between Anna and Kate where where Anna is constantly be beholden to Kate and all of her things. <laughs> he also blushes when Kate kisses him. Is he feeling weird because he's imagining Kate in the sexy dress Anna is wearing? <laughs> or something like that? I don't know. And then I said, oh no, it's a big faux incest gangbang. <laughs> I thought he was just frowning because he didn't see Kate. He was just like, where is Kate? Maybe. I mean, it sounds like he's frowning because of the dress, but I think it's... but. Speaking of Ray, uh, why is he so mad about the whole Christian being the boyfriend thing? Here's the quote. Didn't know you worked on the student magazine, Anna! Ray's voice is a quiet admonishment, revealing his irritation. She Because they've been talking for like half an hour and she didn't mention that she had a boyfriend or that she worked on the student newspaper, not magazine. Whoa, then that's a typo in the, um, in my version. Magazine. 
she, you know, that's a big deal, I guess. Like, they've been ta- they talked for like a half an hour before, and she didn't mention these things. I was wondering, perhaps, if he just doesn't like boys, doesn't like men, on his daughter. Probably not. <laughs> Why wouldn't he pick up on the fact that perhaps they're not, like, that much together yet? I think he's totally justified as a dad. Well, because dads can get mad about that kind of thing all the time. Yeah. Well, but with the, with the student newspaper thing, I mean, it would just seem like she was keeping a secret, because it, it, he's taking it from the perspective that she's been working there for a while, and she just hasn't ever said anything. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like she's telling a bunch of lies. All right. So the subconscious has a really snarky line where she says, So are you going to introduce Ray to the man you're fucking? He'd be so proud. That's a fucked up thing to say. I kind of, I think I would agree. I don't want to introduce anyone to my parents. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really rude. C- okay, Christian gets super jealous. Um, Kate's brother, Ethan, another man who's probably in love with Anna, like, holds her and has his arm around her waist. And has super sexy tousled hair. Tousled. <laughs> tousled. He gets super jealous about Ethan, and he gets very jealous at the very mention of Jose uh, doing work on her car. Like, you have fucking known Anna for two weeks. She's known these people for much longer. And why isn't he jealous about Ray? He's not related to Anna and spends lots of time with her. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Sorry for getting weird. There's a lot of incest chat going on here. Well, it's not really incest, (laughs) Sheridan. He's her stepdad. But in my opinion, and I have talked about this a lot, uh, sociological, where incest is concerned, sociological relationships are much more important than biological relationships. So even if someone is not a biological parent, even if they are, uh, quote unquote, uh, okay, no, not, but if they are abusing someone, uh, it is much worse. Yeah, you um, would still classify it under a really unhealthy exchange of power or like yep. risky behavior. Like, you know, a normal parent child relationship does not involve sex. Yeah. Yep. Um, anyway. Anyways, here's a quote. Um, this is the worst thing I've ever read. Here we go. Anna, here's two girls that we're talking. Must be Christian Grey. Is he single? Uh, Anastasia bristles! I don't think so, she murmurs. Ow! Both girls look at me in surprise. I think he's gay, I mutter. <laughs> record scratch and all record scratches. Like, what? Why would you say that? Two girls that you don't know who are strangers say that your boyfriend is hot. So your response is to say, I think he's gay. Why? To, to make sure that they never consider talking to him or thinking about him? That wouldn't stop anybody, by the way. If they did want to sexually fantasize about Christian, who cares if he's gay? Anything's real in a fantasy. Well, I mean, maybe she's worried that they will talk to him and he will like them instead. But that is such a big leap. Like, I know. I mean, it's the same thing that Christian is doing, but actually a little more. And, so, and, 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 and like, I think he's gay. I think he's gay. I just can't get over how like offensive that is, too. Like, yeah, I thought that was really fucked up. I did not like that. It it's almost not quite a safe word just because it's so obscenely stupid. Like I don't, I th- I feel like nobody would say that in real life, so it doesn't really bother me. But like, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Uh, the graduation ceremony thing I thought was their their graduation and I looked up uh, Washington State University Vancouver's um, like graduating class size not for this year but um its current student population which is a little over three thousand like three thousand one hundred forty something students like even if evenly divided it'd be like 700 students so to have 700 students at once all a single file go up on stage and receive diplomas and get a handshake well she says there's 400 yeah but I, that might have just been el james like not knowing i mean that's still a lot of people that's like i don't remember how big my graduating class was uh but we did we did single file but i went to a, a private college it wasn't um so there were a lot, a lot fewer people. Well, what happened with my school is that we had like a convocation or commencement or invocation. I mean, there's there's different terms. It was a, it was a graduation ceremony for the larger student body. And that was after smaller, de- that may have been before. Either way, there were smaller departmental graduation ceremonies where they actually handed out the diplomas because it's easier to deal with. But my class was also like a, a thousand people or more, so... What's your point? That it didn't seem realistic? I you... mean, you just, you just didn't really finish the thought. Anna holds up the graduation line by talking to Christian, which is not cool. No. At all. It's fucking rude. Everybody fucking saw that. I don't know, there's so much... I don't know, it's very strange. Like, graduation ceremonies are terrible in general, especially if they are ones where everybody has to file up in a, in a line, because it's just horrible like like, (laughs) yep it's super rude and it's not really realistic either they have they have to have like a um you know how in like shonen animes in other words like dragon ball z and stuff like 
they have these really long conversations in the midst of battle. The only real theory that you can have is that like time slows down to accommodate this. I think that it's only feasible, this conversation is only feasible if that rule's in effect. Also, so she talks to him in line and then the girls are super surprised when they find out that Christian wants to talk to her. Oh um, my god, but I thought he was gay! But also, she she talks to, to him right then in the middle of the goddamn ceremony when they should not be having a conversation. He's not being very discreet, uh, which seems to be a priority of his what with the NDA there's a lot of um, I, I I don't know it's it's weird she's clearly not comfortable with it there's a lot of boundary boundary crossing going on in this chapter I yeah don't like I it. agree he's too close to like her real life which is strange because it seems like that's what she wants like oh be my boyfriend yeah but then she's really uncomfortable with him like you know talking to her stepdad being there at her graduation whatever so it's a good point that you've raised here anyways all right after graduation they whatever, things happen, blah, blah, blah. But then she tells Christian that she will agree to the contract. And his response to this after a fashion is this quote. Jesus, Anna, you're so unexpected. You take my breath away. She's not unexpected. She had like one of two options. Yes or no. I cannot, I, ah. This is like maybe the third time that he said something like this. I'm like, no, she's not. She's not unexpected at all. You're fucking controlling all of her actions anyway because you're a crazy long con dom fucking asshole. I was gonna I was gonna argue this with you because he expected her to answer the next day and she does it today right now. But okay it's unexpected but is it so unexpected? Maybe he does he knows not to get his hopes up or something. I mean how, how could he not see that like I'm sure that he knew as soon as he told her that he would give her what she wanted what, which was like a relationship that she would say yes. It had to have been like a thought out thing. So to follow up on that, she seems like she immediately regrets saying that she'll agree to the contract when Christian says, or rather when uh, I think Ray invites Christian to go grab a bite to eat with them. And she's like, oh no, I don't want to do this anymore. And then immediately after that, she's like, she forgets that she regrets everything. Like, well, is she just like, you know, fearful that she did a new thing or does she actually regret it? What do you guys think? Was it like a snap reaction to say like, yes, I'll agree because she got the thing that she wanted? I think so. Definitely. Probably. But she hasn't signed anything, so True. it should count. No, it probably she doesn't should count. should still be able to back out and back out at any goddamn time. <sighs> I know. And she can, um, but it's just... She pretends uh, that she can't. I think she maybe doesn't understand, really, even in spite of all this stuff. Like It might be... <laughs> this is a much more frivolous example, but sometimes um, you will say that you will go somewhere, and you don't want to go, but then you have to. I know what you mean by that, but I think that this is different, because, like... It, it just comes across to me like Anastasia is, like, genuinely stupid, and, like, it just hasn't... The information has not pierced the, the cement encasing that her brain is inside of just like okay like we went over this contract but like i still don't have any control like fucking asshole you do <laughs> stop it okay related to this if i tell him i want more he may say no and i could jeopardize what he's offered how like you guys are supposed to be negotiating like she she doesn't want to risk telling him that she wants hearts and flowers which has been established that that is what she wants and he keeps saying, like, I don't know any other way because I'm a stubborn jerk who won't try a thing, even though... And I'm, I'm at least glad that she doesn't, like, stretch out not telling him that she wants this other thing for chapter upon chapter, and she says it now. But I have a feeling it's going to come up some more. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. It's good that she finally decided to tell, like, the whole truth for once instead of omitting all these, like, really important details and things that she wants. Uh, Christian is talking to Anna, and he's like, why didn't you answer my emails? Or why didn't something on the phone or something? And Anna's like, oh, why are you worried about me? And Christian says, like, oh, because you went home in that death trap you call a car. That's just mean. Because he's saying, like, I was worried about you because I hate your car. You have yeah, a shit like, car. That car is so unfabulous, girlfriend. You're going to die if you drive in that car. Uh, it sounds like shit. Looks like shit. It's scary. You're dumb. Do what I want. Cause, and that's just Christian, like, totally looking down on her for not having any money. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Also, so... And he, the reason he probably thought she had died was because she hadn't looked at her phone since she got home, or is it on anything like that? Is it on yeah. ring? Is it on vibrate? Well, it sounds like it was off. Like she had to charge it. She said. Oh, okay. See, I forgot that little detail. Well, it would be really funny if this whole time it was ringing and she just didn't understand. <laughs> 
like I I know everybody's different and she's like a little behind the times, but this is so strange to me that she would not have checked her phone all night. Yeah, like aren't you excited about having a phone? Like don't you want to set an alarm on it, for instance? How, how does she wake up in the morning? Well, she probably has an actual alarm clock. Who does that now? I use my phone. Yeah, I used to have a, an alarm clock in college, which was slightly before I trusted my phone. And I suppose this was slightly before the day. Yeah, this was a little bit before the days of smartphones. So, but still, like cell phones were and are very important. Like, well, I mean, especially. I used my Nokia. I had like this the really crummy like candy bar Nokia phone. That had an alarm. I had uh, a razor and I did I did use the phone alarm mm-hmm. uh, once I stopped trusting my actual alarm. Yeah, throughout um, high school I only ever used a phone alarm. I never Wow. But I mean more than that, it's just it's just strange to me that she wouldn't even have her phone on. Yeah. Or, like have it with her when Ray was coming to meet her. Like what if Ray Probably Kate handled it. <laughs> She's so used to having Kate handle things that she didn't even think to have a phone on. Yeah, I don't. It's it's just weird and not not uh, you're not with the times, James. I, I I I'm like this. I don't ever check my phone. Um, Sometimes I do it on purpose to establish that I'm an independent person. <laughs> Is that weird? I'm sorry. I miss calls and texts all the time, but that's because I don't ever get any. Really, I'm just missing them because they're not there. I dare you to put your phone number on this podcast. I mean, that's sort of the same for me, but I'm still constantly using it. I mean, that's just because it's a smartphone and it has more uses than receiving calls. I basically don't use my phone for anything other than occasionally talking yeah. on it and texting very <laughs> occasionally. Like, I don't look at it to do... I almost never use it to, to like, surf the internet or, like, look Whoa. at... Like, I don't use it for that stuff. I basically, when I'm out, I just don't use it. Like... Wow. You're a good person. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I can confirm having met Cherry Doom that she's she loves that phone. Loves that phone. <laughs> Not saying it's a bad. I thing. don't like. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. That's the sort of person I am. Even in college, I would turn my phone off most of the time. Um, I was really hard to reach. <laughs> Not intentionally, but I kind of have this thing where like I'm like a little phone wizard, and I try to get it so that I have the lowest bill possible. So I keep the and also the battery sucks on it, which is weird because it's a good phone. I do this thing where like I always have the mobile network off, and like if somebody needs to use my phone for that, I'm like I have to go like turn the network on, and like <laughs> it's really annoying for others, I'm sure. Conclusion: Everyone's different. We all phones that work instead of Anastasia. All right, uh, the last dumb thing that we all had to say. By we all, I mean me. The halter neck gray chiffon dress that, uh, or rather that Anastasia borrows from Kate is a good dress. It's probably the best thing Anna's worn so far that, you know, compliments her color and everything. There are some pictures of her wearing it in the movie on set, and it looks really nice and cute the way that they designed it. Maybe not as sexy as I had imagined it in the book, but it's, it's nice. Like, it's really nice. There's a picture. Uh, but since this is a podcast, I guess that doesn't help you. I could link it in the in the blog post, but there's a very, very good chance that I will forget. Yeah, well, why don't you just Google uh, Jamie Dornan blinds Dakota Johnson, which sounds really violent, but I promise it's not. <laughs> Does he do that in the in the book? I don't remember. It would be in the next chapter, but I don't believe he does. Jamie Dornan arrested for throwing acid in eyes of Dakota Johnson on set of Fifty Shades of Grey. No, oh, I see. It's her getting in the car. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. I said that I think he looks super nerdy in that uh, image for some reason. His hair is too curly. They both just always look so frumpy. I, don't I, I think Jamie Dornan, they do so much, they did so much stuff to him. And like, because he has like really curly hair. And I think they have to like straighten it every time. They shoot, they must have to. It, uh, and like, they just, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 great what they did to him or whatever, but like, I, I mean, it's cool. It's like kind of a, a Gary Oldman type thing, but it's like, why not just find somebody who looks like Christian or the way that you want him to look? The last thing I wanted somebody to say about, words about was that, um, so she's trying to give the books back to Christian, the Thomas Hardy books, and she writes a little quote to go with it. I just don't care. I just, I think the listeners should know that it happens. The quote on the book is, I agree to the conditions, Angel, because you know best what my punishment ought to be. Only... Only, don't make it more than I can bear. I don't know what the context is of this. I'm assuming it has to do with her stabbing her ex-husband or something. Because that's the only thing I know about this book. So what happened is her first husband is a dick. And then, like, there's some kind of infidelity or whatever. And Angel Claire is like, I hate you now. And then she agrees, like, she'll let him, you know, punish her in some way or whatever. Wait, why does she need punishing? Because she was a bad girl. For something. What does he do? I don't know. I think he just avoids her. Oh. <laughs> um. Anyway, so that happens. This this book subplot still kicking around. Like I said, 
All right, listeners, time for Kate chat. Here we go. There's a really funny quote, and I want us all to think about it. And by think about it, I mean laugh at it. Beautiful Kate and beautiful Christian. Together! This is when she's thinking about, like, what would have happened if Kate wasn't sick that day, and she gets all, like, weirdly jealous of Kate and Christian, something that would never happen. I almost think it sounds like she's sort of saying, oh, they'd be good together, and she doesn't sound jealous at all. How does that not sound like the most spiteful thing? She's lamenting that she's not a beautiful person. Beautiful Kate! Beautiful Christian! Ugly Anna! That's what it sounds like (laughs) to me. I guess. That's her own fault. Yeah, it is her own fault. It's an interesting... I mean, we've we've talked about before about, like, what would have happened if Kate went there. Probably nothing. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Kate wouldn't have fallen on her face. Do we actually think that Kate and Christian would date? And furthermore, because Anastasia mentions it, like, a sentence later, who would win in a contest of wills? Probably Christian. Uh, really? I think Kate. Because Christian seems like he's he doesn't want to mess with her. Like, do you think that Kate, uh, that Christian would end up being quote-unquote whipped? Yes. Well, not whipped, mm. but, like... It seems more likely that they would not enter a relationship together, unless it was to do some kind of crazy dom duo poly thing. Yeah, I don't think they would be in a relationship. I think the only time we'd see a contest of wills would be like a business thing. In which case, I don't think either of them would back down and they'd eventually compromise out of, or they'd grudgingly compromise. She probably would have gotten a lot more, yeah, interesting information about in her interview. She probably would have dug deeper, especially on the the question about being gay. Um... Spoilers, um, it comes up. The Contest of Wills comes up. Oh boy. Kate's speech theme is, what's next after college? So, like, is there any other theme for a college commencement speech? I don't know. Maybe. What about, like, nostalgia? <laughs> like, don't Maybe. forget the best times of your life here in college, and not even bring up the whole, like, you have to get a job? That's not really a college uh, graduation speech topic. It's more of a Yeah, it's more topic. high school. Well. Um, I think there's a large variety of college commencement, like, these sorts of speech topics. The, like, what's next after college speech, even then, there's a lot of variation in, like, how people talk about that. But, like, um, I think, like, the va- I think the valedictorian speech is usually like this. Um, like, here's yeah. what we've done, here's where we're going. Sometimes there are people that give speeches that are just like, fuck all this shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're just like, school is stupid, the world is awful, <laughs> I can't wait to die. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> That's my kind of graduation speech. God, I fucking hate, I fucking hate. Graduation ceremonies, marriage ceremonies, funerals. I hate every uh, structured ceremony. <laughs> I agree. I wanted to skip both of my graduation ceremonies, but my parents just were like, but we want to see you graduate. And I was like, I guess I understand. I got I understand. really sick on my high school graduation. I had a really high fever and I was hallucinating that like, there are these little tiny black mage men making like a city on me and everything was glowing. <laughs> and then I threw up. So that's why I didn't go to graduation. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Uh, and then I also don't plan to walk, uh, this summer when I graduate, because I don't want to. And I'm 20- I'm gonna be 24 years old, and that's way too old. (laughs) You'll still be tiny, though. Oh, yeah, nobody will know, but- (laughs) (laughs) What's that 12-year-old doing on stage? (laughs) Oh my god! I don't look like I'm 12. Don't- don't make me derail this whole podcast to explain how I look in real life. How are you gonna look in, like, in, like, um, regalia? Like, with a cap and gown on. I'm gonna look adorable. You look like a little child. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Turtles. I'm just kidding. No, I, I accept it. Come on. You think I haven't, like, heard a million versions of that joke throughout my 23 years of life? I know. I, I feel bad. I'm really yeah, sorry. Well, well, you're tall! Okay, uh, Kate. Kate, Kate, Kate. She does some really egregious shit by by introducing Krishna saying, Anastasia's boyfriend! She doesn't even hesitate to ruin Anastasia's whole life with Ray. So Anna gets really mad. I think it's pretty funny, but Chad has words to say. Yeah, Kate walks up and is like, this is Anna's boyfriend, Christian Grey, just out of nowhere. And that that's pretty, that's bad. Why would she do that? There are definitely situations where, sure, you, you could do that if it were like a less serious relationship and he wasn't super rich and hadn't just given a huge speech in front of her entire graduating class and um if anna had had boyfriends previously and not only that but like there's all these terrible like she's be- one she's being really presumptuous that they're even dating because she doesn't know that and she's seen anna just like crying about him so maybe she doesn't want to just like i mean she knows they're fucking yeah it doesn't th- yeah i mean i know that's a you know that <laughs> and then there's like there's also like assumptions just about because she says some things about like oh he has she's assuming that he has like commitment issues or something and yeah. like just all yeah, sorts of based on a stupid... lie that Anastasia tells which is the lie of omission as per the NDA maybe maybe she and Elliot 
Elliot. Elliot. Yeah, her and Elliot, or maybe they are now quote-unquote boyfriend and girlfriend officially, and she's just sort of assuming that since they met on the same timeline and they are related, that they are now those things or something. But it's it's bad, still. Maybe Elliot ruined everything behind the scenes by saying, like, oh yeah, like, Christian is... <laughs> Yeah, they're dating. Like, probably based on some weird thing that Christian told him. Like, yeah. so, like, are you, are you together, man? And he's like, yeah, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. He probably just said that to get him off his back and not say, no, I'm in a kinky sex relationship with her. Yeah, so there are many reasons. But the the one reason that could be obvious is just that Kate is being a douchebag here. And, you know, for being all, like, tenacious and curious, like, she did not pick up on so much of that situation and what the deal is with it. The lack of critical thinking is amazing. So speaking of Kate, Ray seems to have a little crush on her. Here's the quote. Hello, Ray! Kate kisses Ray on both cheeks, making him blush. Yep. <sighs> It's cute. Kissing someone else's dad on both cheeks. No thank you. Unless you're like... They didn't seem that close. I mean, it sort of sounded like their parents had never met. I don't I don't know. It, maybe I'm wrong. Mwah. But... Mwah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it strange. Yeah, it's a little bit much. And also, like, you know, you're 40... Probably older than 40 years. What, what do we say? He's like 50-something, maybe, if he was in the Vietnam War. Like, why are you blushing? You're an old guy. You probably have, you know... Why are you bl- Maybe... I would say that it's genetic on his part. Because he gave it to Anna, but of course they're not related. So I don't know. Okay, I have a thing that I just thought of. Okay, so Anna says about Kate uh, giving her speech. She's composed and funny. The girls beside me erupt on cue at her first joke. Oh, Catherine Cavanaugh, you can deliver a good line. (laughs) But she doesn't include the line. She couldn't think of a one. I hate that. You know, the author does this so much. Oh, the thing that she said was so beautiful and poignant, but I didn't like write it down. (laughs) Like, just believe me. And that's the whole reason that she did the thing with uh, Christian's speech, because she didn't want to write yeah. it. Right. Like, because, I mean, really, even if that were, like, a shocking revelation, wouldn't you really want to pay attention to the rest of the speech still? Oh like, my god, yeah. Like, what else yeah. can I pick up? That is sort of the mark of a bad writer. I think of, like, and I don't know if you, if anybody thinks Tolkien is a good or bad writer. You can all have your opinions. But, like, he'll, he'll say, like, and then the dwarves sang a song. And then, like, he writes the song. Okay, yeah. correct. <laughs> but, like, you can't just say... And then the dwarf had a speech. It was a very inspiring speech. And, like, not say what it was. Like, that is, right. that's lazy. That's shitty. So Kate is part of a whole sexy, charismatic family, as evinced by her brother Ethan Cutie. Could have been more erotic uh, potential with this hot brother, especially since he's attracted to Anastasia, obviously. The sibling FFM threesome. But, of course, Christian alpha males all over Ethan, and he expires. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought uh, that, yeah, Ethan and Kate co-topping would be pretty cool. It would be pretty cool. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting. I'm trying to think of the book. Yes. yes. Memoirs of Women of Pleasure is a romantic novel first published in England in 1948. There's, like, many adaptations of this and, like, sort of spin-offs because it's, like, pretty much one of the first erotica novels. There's, like, a big difference in this book and that style of erotica where, like, you know, one of them is... It's a woman who is having sex with lots of different people. It's more about her own experience of discovering, you know, mm-hmm. different many different types of sex, whereas this is much more of a romance novel where it's one person who gets all the, yeah. all the pleasure, and as yet, it says. And yet, it keeps introducing all these, like, archetypes for erotica <laughs> novels, which is confusing. Favorite line! Alright, so Anastasia is all mad, understandably, when Kate introduces Christian as her boyfriend, and Christian and Ray are off talking by themselves for a second. Anna's like, how could you, Kate? And Kate's like, don't worry, like... He seems Trey cool about it, Anna. <laughs> Trey cool! What? It sounds like some kind of 80s dialogue. I've never heard anybody say that in my life unless it was like on TV. Trey cool. Yeah. Uh, don't have a cow, Anna. He's Trey cool. Sounds like maybe something you would hear in um, Saved by the Bell. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. I can't remember her name. I can remember Lark, Lark Voorhees, uh, the, the black girl. Um, I don't name, remember I know her act- the actress's name. Anyway. Maybe she's saying that he's actually like acting like Trey Cool, the drummer for Green Day, and he just went off and played a drum solo. He's just like, he seems Trey Cool about it. Guys, I believe it's, La- <laughs> I believe it's Lando Talrizian you're thinking of. What? Because last time in the, epi- in the fucking podcast, we had problems with a black actor again. Did you say Talrizian? Did I? Talrizian? How do you say his name? It's Calrissian. Oh, Calrissian. I'm so dumb. You're all racist! Okay. <laughs> well, to, to be fair, I didn't see the Star Wars movies until I was 21, and that was only two years ago. So it should be fresh in your mind. Yeah. Anyway, um... <laughs> I think maybe she knows exactly what she's doing. The vixen. Um, <laughs> Anastasia says this. About Kate. About Kate her. when Kate 
does the thing where she's like, you're a boyfriend. Yeah. Um, in a... <laughs> I'm not sure when Anna decided to be such a Scooby-Doo villain, because she also says, You haven't heard the last of this, Catherine Cavanaugh! Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> she has, I mean, she has a very, like, villain-esque relationship with Kate. Like, some sort of sexy, uh... Curse that darn sexy Kate. Cat, Catwoman, Batman type of thing, maybe. Where, like, but not exactly, because that's not how Batman talks. But some, I'm trying to think, I can't think of a different, but, like, you know, a very sexy, you know, contentious relationship. Like, oh, you're so tenacious, Catherine Kavanaugh. Yeah. I'll get you for this. So she's, like, she's more like the Penguin. Yeah. It is the Penguin. Kate, Kate is sexy Batman. Sexy ginger Batman. Maybe she's more like uh, Poison Ivy. Uh, mm. Probably. Like I, they, because Poison Ivy has a pretty antagonistic relationship with all the male villains. How does she feel about Catwoman though? Maybe, maybe that's the, how... the male, the male villains. Like the female know, villains. But... She, Catwoman. That, oh yeah, Catwoman. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. So at the very end of her dream, she says, "And I come gloriously, shouting my release." I just thought that was funny. To come gloriously. It sounds like a Walt Whitman poem, shouting my release. <laughs> I sound my barbaric yop. He, he sounds his, he shouts his barbaric release yop. Which, I mean, if you've read Walt Whitman, that's not uncalled for. Anyways, goddess watch. So I have collected a couple things. Here we go. My inner goddess is not pleased. Um, She's not pleased because Christian would look at her when he was previous to when he was having shit i forgot to talk about this oh what was it oh i was gonna talk about how like christian looks at her uh during the while he's standing up there on the stage not talking then he doesn't look at her and she suddenly is like oh no he hates me like immediately (sighs) even though he just looked at you and she doesn't know what she wants and possibly it's because the inner goddess is manipulating her there are consequences to the goddess's displeasure Observe. So the subconscious goes, You look kinda dorky. So are you gonna introduce Ray to the man you're fucking as Chris as uh Chad mentioned, not Christian. Um Anastasia thinks, God, I hate her sometimes. Then later, I think my subconscious has fainted. And while the subconscious has fainted, the displeased goddess took control and made Anastasia agree to the contract. And after she does that, the subconscious wakes up and says, What have you done? My subconscious screams at me. My inner goddess is doing backflips in a routine worthy of a Russian Olympic gymnast. Uh, so if you remember my pet theory way back at the beginning of this episode that Anna's a horcrux, subconscious Dumbledore, Harpy, is screaming and horrified because Anna has granted herself the horcrux to Christian for evil uses. Okay, she also is the inner goddess is a cheerleader at some point in charity we should say words about it. My inner goddess jumps up and down with cheerleading pom-poms, shouting yes at me. What color is her cheerleading? Uh, and I, s- I suggested light blue and gray to signify sharing the union of Christian and Anna. I was originally going to say, oh, pale blue and white, just like everything else in this book. What and white? Pale blue and light. I mean, pale blue and white. I'm sorry. What is the goddess level? I think that we need to increase it because of the Horcrux problem. Also because of the contract signing. She just seems happy. Can we relate it to a Horcrux? Were there any gray Horcruxes? Rowena Ravenclaw. Okay, so Ravenclaw is, um... The diadem? Yeah, the diadem. Shining silver diadem gray. <laughs> okay. Sounds like a uh, sure. sounds like a Chinese kung fu attack. But anyways, what was good? What was good? I'll tell you. Short chapters are always nice. Uh, and it was a good change from the soul crushing sads in chapter twelve, which were not really settled in chapter thirteen, in my opinion. Well, he did sort of agree to try a dating thing. Maybe. Well, this chapter he did. In chapter twelve and chapter thirteen, eh. and then in chapter fourteen, this chapter it feels like it was a little bit more hopeful. I just saw somebody ski by outside. Not really want to go out and like slide around in the snow. Don't. <laughs> Never have fun. Do you have any good things, Chet? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, I said that the beginning sex scene was not truly awful. Um, it was. It was. I agree. It was um, pretty descriptive, uh, without being silly. Like there wasn't a ton of. I mean, it was basically just a description of actions, but it was still uh, sort. Of, you could definitely tell, you know, like that there was arousal happening, and she, there wasn't like constant inner monologuing. And if she would write like this more, maybe it wouldn't be such a shitty book. By the way, the reason I didn't include a summary of the sex, like I do when sex happens. Is there is no genital contact with each other's genitals. Yeah, he hit her clip, but that doesn't count. It's sexual, it's sexual, but maybe not sex. And it didn't really happen. Then I don't really have to summarize it. <laughs> All right, so safe words. I don't have one. I had a really weird, I had a, a really strange uh, episode of something like derealization while reading this chapter. Something about Christian Grey being up on stage, them sharing this like secret. 
of them having fucked. I don't know, it's just something about how you don't think about... You, you try not to think about the people that you see out and about having sex, but even though it's something that they probably do, I don't know, it just gave me a, a strange feeling of... Wait, um, you have to try not to think about the, it? No, I'm saying that you hopefully don't. Yeah, of course. Okay. Sorry, it just sounded weird. I wanted to clarify. Like, you, you don't think about, but then sometimes you do, and you realize that people are real people, mm -hmm. and it's weird. It's like when you see, like, a teacher off-duty, like, at a restaurant, and you're like, oh god, they're real. I think maybe this book triggered my my insanity, derealization problems, <laughs> where you think that you're the only real person, and everybody else is, like, an illusion somehow. And also, they shake hands, Ray and Christian. I feel s Okay, so let me let me read this whole thing. Likewise, Ray responds, look after my baby girl. Oh, I fully intend to. They shake hands. I feel sick. Ray has no idea how Christian intends to look after. That's just, just um, weird, and I don't like thinking about it. Just, like, the strange relationship between your parents and the person you're fucking. <laughs> yeah. This is sort of what I was talking about when I said it didn't seem like she really wanted to sign the contract because... I mean, she, she didn't seem like she wanted to have a relationship because she seems like she wants to keep these parts of her life separate, even though she thinks that she doesn't. Spoiler dungeon! Which, uh, she gets the car next chapter, right? Yeah, it is next chapter. I mean, it does seem like it would be a graduation present. Yeah, yeah, in spite of the car, the books, the soft limits, the candy, yeah, it's definitely next chapter. Is it a super fancy sports car? It's an Audi. It's a red hatchback car, a two-door compact Audi. So, yeah. Well, a hatchback isn't a sports car, though. Yeah, it's a fake sports car. I am fucking him. I am in charge. Spoiler from the next spoiler from the next chapter that I just saw. Spoilers! They have sex next chapter. Uh. Uh. Alright, well. <laughs> Alright, Chad. Uh, nope. Okay. Episode over. See you later, baby. Later, baby. Later, baby. Goodbye. Yeah.